This video is going to show you how to edit 3D video in Adobe Premiere Pro. First, we're going to go to File, New, Project, and we're going to make sure we have browsed to the folder we want to save the project in, which I'm already there. I'm going to name this 3D VR Tutorial and click OK. Next step is going to be to bring in our videos that we want to edit. So I've saved all my videos to this folder and these are the Insta360 Evo video files. When you install Insta360 Studio, there's a checkbox for installing the Adobe Premiere plugin. To download Insta360 Studio, you need to go to the Insta360.com, go to Downloads, and really can select any of these cameras. I'll select the 1R. Scroll down and you'll find Insta360 Studio 2020, either Mac OS or Windows. I'm on Windows, so I'll click Download. This will download the file, and then when you go to install it, and this is in the support form here asking about how you can use it in Adobe Premiere, you're going to see this option here, which during the installation process for Insta360 Studio, there's a checkbox for install plugin for Adobe Premiere. You must do this or else Adobe Premiere won't be able to read the native Insta360 files that uh, the camera produces. I have the plugin installed so I can simply drag and drop these files in there. You'll notice that there's actually, even though I have four clips, I have eight files. The underscore 00, zero and 10, those are the left lens and right lens so we don't need to drop both of those in we just need one of them i generally pick the zero zero i don't know that it matters but i'm going to drag all four of those into adobe premiere now i've got my four files in here i need to start to figure out which ones are which and i can double click that and open the video in the preview this looks to be the close file this is the medium and this is the furthest away, and then this should be the teacher student. So I'm going to start with the close file, and I'm going to drag and drop this into the timeline here. So when I do that, it creates another file, and this file is the sequence file. I need to make a change to the sequence file for this to be recognized as a 3D file, so I'm going to right-click on it. I'm going to go up to Sequence Settings, and then down here, I'm going to make sure that this is set to stereoscopic side by side and I've got 180 and 180 here. Now with those two things done, now I can just use the timeline like I normally would in Premiere to edit the files. Now these are large files so you do need a reasonably high spec computer for this to work smoothly. And one thing you can verify is that if you do have a uh, dedicated graphics card, you go down the file, project settings, general, and you want to make sure that your GPU acceleration is on. Now I have seen before where this can cause problems where you get a black screen and things like that. And generally that has to do with the drivers being out of date. So just make sure you have the latest video card drivers and all the latest updates for Premiere Pro and you'll generally be okay. So with that on, I can preview the timeline. And at the beginning of this, I say, are we recording? So I'll want to clip that out. So I'll play. Okay, so I said start filming. And I'm going to drag this and snap that to the line here so I can skip that part. And if we zoom in, which I can do by either dragging this or holding Alt and rolling the mouse wheel, uh, I, can, I can see that a little bit better. So I can zoom in to this clip. And if you really need to make some, some edits um, that are a little bit tighter, you can do that. So I can double click on each of these video or audio tracks here to make them larger and smaller as well, which makes it easier to, to see what's going on. And then I can drag this to the beginning if I want to do that. So generally at the end, you hear the click of the camera as well. So. I'm going to want to make sure that's snipped out, so I'll drag this to the end. I say we're out of puck, so I'm going to stop it there. A couple things. I can, if I move my mouse over the end of the file, I can again drag it until it snaps. But another method you can use is, is to snip it here. And if I have the cursor set to where I want it to cut, I'll press Control and K on the keyboard. That actually clips the the clip so I can it's completely separated from the rest of it and I can move this somewhere else if I want but in this case I'm just gonna delete it
Okay, so the next step will be to put in the the medium size clip. But before I do that, I might want to add some text so people know what's going on instead of it just being one um, long video where it just jumps between scenes. Maybe I'll add some black screens and I'll, I'll say what's going on here. So I can go down to new item and then I can say black video and click OK. And now I've added black video into my media. And I might want to add some black video in front of this. So I'll drag this out of the way. I'll drop my black video here and then I'll drag this back and, and snap it in. And if I want to change the, the length of this, so we can see this is about five seconds of video, I can, um, I can do that just by like you normally would where you can drag the length of it however you want. So um, I think five seconds is good. So with the black video, I probably want to put some text. So I'm going to click the T button over here, the text tool, and I'm going to click up into the window and I'm going to type in scene one closest. Okay. So I've got that there. Now there's a, you can, you can actually arrange this so that it's centered. I can click the graphics button and then under the edit tab, I can click the align vertical center and horizontal center. I've got that now centered. And then of course, if I want to, I can change the size of the text. So I make that larger. Of course, as I do that, I may need to recenter it. Um, but the important thing here is this will not display in VR. And the way I can tell that is um, this button right here, the toggle VR display, this actually lets me see sort of what, what VR, what it will look like in VR. Now, if you don't have this button here, which is the VR toggle, and you probably don't, you're going to click the plus button here and you're going to add that. So that's that's how you add the, the control. And we can toggle this on and off. And um, so this is turned on. And if you're just watching VR video on YouTube, for instance, you don't have glasses on, you can move your mouse around and drag the screen. That's what this will look like. But a, an easier way to sort of get a feeling for what this would look like is if I click the tools button and I go down to VR video and settings, I can view either the left lens or the right lens. And if I when I click OK here, watch up here, you'll see it shifts a little bit. So now this is the same time, but the right lens. Or if I go back, I can go to settings and change this to anaglyph. And that's going to show you what both lenses together look like. And if you're wearing anaglyph glasses, so those ones that have a red lens and a blue lens, you'd actually, this would pop out and you'd see it in 3D. And this is really the best way to preview 3D on the screen. Um, you also can, there's an option in Adobe to connect an Oculus up to it and then you can really preview it better. But this gives you a good sense of it before you've exported it, what it's going to look like. Um, obviously the colors aren't like they would be, but you get a sense of what that looks like prior to exporting the file. So this is a good way to tell. And if we go back to the beginning here, um, we'll, we'll see, you know, it just doesn't look right because we haven't set this file up to, to work in 3D. So I'm going to turn this off. The way to do that is we need an effect. So if we go to effect and we type in plane, there's under immersive video, VR plane to sphere. So I'm going to drag this and drop this onto the text graphic here. And then if I go to effects controls here and I select the graphic, you should see the VR plane to sphere effect here. Now it automatically scales this down to 60%. You may want to make that bigger or smaller depending on how big your text was to start. And then you have this stereo disparity. So this is going to be how far apart the actual text is for the left lens and right lens. The, the bigger this number, the further apart, and um, it, it'll change the way it looks. I think probably sticking with something like six or seven to start is good. And we can preview this. If we go to our VR mode, and we go back to Anaglyph. Now we can really get a feel for what that stereo disparity is doing. So this is gonna make the text pop a little bit. So I'll put that down to nine is good. Okay, so I've got scene one closest. So when somebody's wearing this 
wearing a, a VR headset. They're going to see that first. And it's going to jump right in. Now we're going to do the same thing. And um, we're going to do that for the, the second video. So I'll just make this a little bit shorter. So now I'm going to add text to this second black screen. And so again, I'm on the, the black and I'll slide this to the beginning. Not that we can, we can change that later. Um, so I'm going to click my text in here. Scene two, middle. And again, under graphics, I may want that aligned, but I'm going to go back to effects, VR plane to sphere again, drop that on there. I'll go to effects control, and then I'll scale that up again to 100. And again, you can double click on it and type in 100 as well. Maybe that's easier. Change that to 10, and we can continue on. So we'll verify this is the medium view by double clicking it and previewing it here. So that's good. Drag that onto the timeline. Okay, and then we're gonna do the last one. In this case, we're gonna try something a little different. We're gonna try to put the text directly on top of the video. So I'm going to bring this over to the start of the third video, which is the furthest. And in this case, I'm gonna click text click up here and say scene three furthest and we'll go to graphics we're gonna center that and then we will go back to effects we already got VR plane to sphere we're gonna drag this onto the graphic now with that graphic selected go to effects control and again 100 and 10. Now with that done, we also can grab this and move it around. So maybe you want this to be further up, further down, but you can see how it looks kind of like a sphere as we do that. So maybe I want to put it underneath the, the front edge of the uh, table that this is sitting on, see what that looks like. So we can move it around and, and, and play with that a little bit. So then the last scene is going to be the one where it's more of a teacher student. We're going to drag that on. Same thing. Text. Let's verify that this is starting where we want it to. Now we're going to say scene for teacher student. change the stereo disparity to 10 and then this video is ready to be exported so we need to go to file export media and this will bring up the export settings window so there are a few very important settings here we're going to scroll down on the video tab until we get to VR video this video is VR needs to be checked and we want to make sure it's stereoscopic side by side and both of these are set to 180 because this is a 3D 180 camera. Now there is also another setting up here for the bitrate. And generally I want to, I set this to about 125 with the maximum being 200. This is going to significantly affect the file size. So we see the estimated file size down here, basically five gigs right now. And if I slide this up, we'll see how significantly the the file size is increased some people say to set it to 150 I've experimented with this a few times and I don't really see much of a difference between say even 100 and 150 but I'll set it to 125 um, at this point we can click the output name and we're just gonna save this as 3d VR tutorial and that's just changing the file name. I'm saving it directly to my desktop and we're gonna click the export button. And this is going to take quite some time because it's putting 
a lot of computer power into processing this. So now the video is done exporting. I can verify it's on my desktop. And if I want to open it, I can preview it on my desktop. Now I'm obviously not going to be able to see this in full 3D, but I can click in and drag around and verify that it, it did export properly. So this is ready to be uploaded to YouTube.